Okay, so um, I'll actually start off with a bit of a disclaimer. Um, Abacus isn't a consultancy. We don't actually offer any formal advice or anything like that. Um, we can point you in the right direction and maybe give you a little a few top tips to, uh, to tell you what to do and, and give you some information from, say, the DMA, um, who can then give you some formal advice. We are, of course, a, a data processor, not a data controller. So it's quite important for us to make sure that we've got all the right flags and all the right permissioning that comes from all of our members, which is why all our database guys are always getting in contact saying, what does this mean, what does that mean, how do we interpret this? Because actually we can't do any, on any of the manipulation at our end, any of the changing the information or the flags on the files themselves. To start off with though, I think it'd be a good idea to go back to basics. Um, so referring me back to this slide, which is blank at the moment, there we go. So we've got all our members, 507 odd members that all contribute their transactions uh, from all their customers and that goes all into the Abacus Alliance. So obviously everything that gets pulled through into the Alliance is that of opt-in customer data and all those customers are multi-buyers or multi-activity customers in the market from which we can obviously then build all of our models for the three main products that we have, the re recruitment, retention, and the realize, the insight side of things. So I think what it really comes down to is that importance of the Abacus Alliance. It is sharing data, but just because the, our members are sending us their customers and their transactions behind those customers, doesn't actually mean that they're contributing into the Abacus Alliance. It's all about sharing shareable data. That's why it's so important for us and for our members as well. So the rules today, there are different rules from different channels. Um, it seems to be as long as you've got the right capture, the right option in there for your customers, then we can, we can use it and you guys can use it as well. Um, for mailable, that's obviously you sending your customers postal mailings. The option is to opt out, as long as you give the customer the option to opt out. And I'm sure everyone is still awake at the end of the day, it's not too long left, but for rentable, that's sharing data with third parties, and the option is to, thanks Rich, you work with us so you should know that, that's good. The option is to opt out. For email, um, obviously having consent to email that customer, the option is to opt in. opt in, thank you very much. And the same is for telephone and SMS as well, that's all opt in. So as far as we're concerned, everything that you send us, we take as gospel. So if you're capturing it in the right way, giving the customers the right options, then you can send it to us and we can have it flagged as such. So rentable data again, I will reiterate a couple of the key facts. You know, it, it is all about giving the customers the opportunity to opt out of sharing data. Um, if a customer hasn't ticked an opt out box, or if they haven't got in contact with you to say, I don't want my data shared, by all means you can share it. Um, if their names are flagged on your database as shareable, when we get it, we'll consider them as shareable. So the more information we can get, the more data that goes into the Abacus Alliance, and the more we have to target on. There is a big difference between rentable data and mailable data. Obviously, there are some kind of clear differences there. Um, quite often, we see one flag come through for both. But it is important, although the option is the same, the option to opt out, you need to flag them separately. So it is rentable versus mailable, and they are quite different. So best practices, I mean, again, we're not a consultancy, so we can't give advice on this, but as far as we're aware, on the market and the market information that we know, and from working closely with people like the DMA, um, you know, we're on the understanding that as long as you've got a, a statement within your privacy policy that says your intention, whether that's to share data with third parties or not, obviously you have to share data with third parties to be a member of Abacus, um, obviously give the right option to those customers, opt out for your mailings and third party sharing, and opt in for email broadcast and telephone communication. Use friendly wording as well. That's something that's come along in the market quite recently. Um, it's not just about capturing the data or giving the right option, but if you're doing it in a nice way, you seem to be able to capture more data. So it's not just straightforward, yes or no, tick this box, thanks very much. Explain to the customer and maybe use some benefits in there of <coughs> why they would want you to share their data. Be consistent as well with online and offline data capture. I'm not talking about the difference between um, postal and email data, but the difference between your website and say your catalog or in the call center or in store. You know, have a bit of consistency there. Make sure everyone's saying the same message. And obviously the consistency between the point of capture as well and your privacy policy. 
there's no point saying your privacy policy you share, but then not giving an, any option to opt out, or vice versa. So I mentioned a minute ago that it's all about the wording of statements and how they affect opt-out rates. This example, from time to time we make our mailing list available to carefully screen companies whose products we believe may be of interest to you. So it's obviously saying that we're going we're to share your data, but only because we think it's going to be of interest to you. If you prefer that we do not share any information with these companies, please contact us. It's quite clear and it's nice, concise wording. It's stating the attention, uh, intention and giving them the option to opt out as well if they want to. Do not send me offers for relevant products from selected third party companies. I think you will all agree that's pretty straightforward and pretty to the point, absolutely fine. But when you compare it to something like, yes, it's okay for your favorite partners to send me freebies and other interesting things, I mean, I'm pretty sure I know which box I'm going to tick because it's a lot more lighthearted. Mark, you might recognize this one. This is the North Kelly website. <laughs> um, so it's just a, an example, really, of the consistency with the privacy policy and the data capture point as well. Again, it's bringing it back to we think it is of interest for you to share your data. You know, it's going to be a benefit to you and it's um, giving a clear option to opt out at point of, uh, of capture as well. This one's another nice one, this is Forever Romano. Um, good use of those, that friendly wording within the privacy policy and then at the bottom there it's um, the capture is Amano's friends. I mean it even makes it into you know, the third parties are actually their friends, you know, they're working closely with them. Every so often we share customer details with selected third party companies who we think offer something our customers would be interested in. It's quite nice, it's quite light wording. So, I don't know how many of you guys know how many of your customers on your file are shareable with third parties? Anyone out there? None of you, awesome, that's good. That, that, that's what we're here for as well, but it is, it is really important to know. You know, the more data you've got to share, not only with Abacus, but if you ended up leaving Abacus for some reason, I'm not sure why, but for some reason you would, if you're going to continue swapping or renting data elsewhere, you want to have the most amount of rentable data you can for your own benefit. If you don't know and you work with the Bureau, check with your Bureau. If you don't know and you don't work with the Bureau, have a look at your own file. Or if you're a member of Abacus, obviously we can help you find out. Um, all your data comes through to us and we load it onto the Alliance. We can <coughs> run database reports, which are absolutely free. We can do those on a monthly basis if need be but we can clearly identify how many rentable names you've got or rentable households you've got on your file. So why now? Why, why is it all happening now? Why are we trying to get you to do it all of a sudden? It seems like a few months ago, all of the account managers just went out there and just hit all their um, accounts with how much data have you got to share? Well, as Lara was saying, the implementation might happen in a couple of years. So you've actually only got two or three years left to capture as much data as possible. It is thought that all historical data that's captured as shareable will be held to and you'll be able to keep that as shareable data. So that's absolutely fine. So the more we can capture now, um, potentially it might be used for the future. We heard earlier from Mark Pragnall that consumer spending continues to increase. Um, so if it is, then, then fantastic. You know, get out there, try and capture more data. You might capture some of that spend as well. And in doing that, obviously, you're going to increase some revenue too. So capturing more data, increasing your activity, you're going to help us to target, help target the right customers by allowing us more access to that shareable information. And at the end of the day, it's all about generating more re revenue for you. So, you know, capture more data, generate more revenue. I think that's what it comes down to. That's me. <laughs>